At the beginning of 2020, as the frost laws came off, Consumers Energy ramped up construction on the Gratiot Farms Wind Project in mid-Michigan. The $260 million project creates a new source of clean, renewable energy from the wind that blows across our state. The project covers over 24,000 acres and includes 60 wind turbines and is expected to have a capacity of up to 150 megawatts of wind energy. It will create direct and indirect economic benefits to Gratiot County. Those benefits start with jobs, approximately 250 construction jobs as the energy park is built, then up to 13 permanent jobs when it begins operations. The wind farm will increase the overall tax base, providing new revenue for local education and critical basic services. And it's all part of Consumers Energy's commitment to protect the planet, empower people, and help Michigan prosper. There's a lot of different parts. We have the engineering groups, we have the construction groups, of course, the contractors that are actually doing the building, all the suppliers. There's all these different groups out there. And as a project manager, really what you're trying to do is pull this all together and kind of hitting our triple constraints that we focus on is the scope, what we're supposed to build, the cost and the schedule. And that's underpinned, um, especially by safety, environmental compliance, and the, and the quality that goes with it. So at the end of this, really the goal is to build a project that's good for the customers in the state of Michigan. I help to coordinate these projects uh, about two years out to get started on the projects. It takes about two years to get the uh, land leases and easements in place. You got to remember that when we get these farms in place that it isn't consumers owned. It's a partnership with the uh, local farmers and owners of this land. We start out by prepping our laydown yard. Uh, we get our trailers set up and everything that we're going to need from a field standpoint to operate efficiently administrative wise to make a project like this happen. While that's occurring, we have crews out in the field that are establishing these access roads uh, and any of the temp radii that's required to bring the components to site. We want those roads to last 30 to 40 years for the operations so that we can continue to use them with uh, minimum maintenance. There's a lot of coordination trying to get these pieces in and trying to work and drive through the county roads. When you're out here, we're the guests. Most of this land where the assets are going, where the wind turbines are being built, this is leased. We need to make sure that we work well with the community, not just the community stakeholders, but also the landowners and they're standing on the side of a, of a dirt pile or they're at the start of the access road in their pickup trucks just watching us build. Out here at Gratiot, we got great people out here and really good community support. It's kind of like a bell curve. We, we start out with about 15 to 30 men and women out here on site. And as things move on, our crew sizes increase. Uh, we bring on uh, the erection crews, the foundation crews, the re-steel crews, crane operators, all the different disciplines that have to come out here to make this job happen. So we ramp up from you know, 15, 30 men and women all the way up to 200, 230 people when we hit that, that peak. And then as things start wrapping up, just like the back end of the bell curve, it starts coming down. So you'll start seeing like your, your, your roads are now built, those crews start going away, your concrete's poured they start going away. So eventually we'll get to a point where we're, we're at about you know, 15, 20, 30 people that are here doing restoration. In its simplest form, the construction of a wind turbine consists of the foundation, the base, mid, and top. Then you have the nacelle, the box that sits on top of the tower, the rotor in front of the nacelle, and the three blades that go into the rotor. Once the team has secured all the proper permits and prepared the sites for construction, they start laying the foundation for clean energy in Gratiot County. Dig the hole, you get down to the subgrade. We have a company that comes in and they test the subgrade. And once we get that passing test and that paperwork saying it's good to build on, crews will come and they put a, they put a mud mat. And a mud mat is basically just a, a two inch seal, seal mat of you know, 2000 PSI concrete that seals that foundation. And it also creates a safe working platform for these guys to come in and start putting that rebar, or that re-steel in. And the re-steel consists of a bottom mat, a mid mat, and ped steel. 
So we'll have an excavation crew come out here and they dig a very large hole. And the hole is obviously to put the concrete in. And the concrete, we have three foundations out here on this project, three different designs, and they, they vary from 380 cubic yards of concrete to 480 cubic yards of concrete. So if you put that in terms of how many trucks you're gonna see down this access row, we carry about 10 yards per truck. At larger foundations, we'll see almost 50 trucks to complete that concrete pour. At that point, we basically wait for a 75% strength. So they take cylinders, they test them, and once those test out to the required PSI, uh, they'll come back and they'll backfill the, the foundations with the, the material that is from the hole that we dug, essentially, right? So whatever comes out goes back in. And one interesting thing about this is these towers are quite large and the, and the wind hits them, right? So they have what's called a tipping point or tipping moment, right? So part of keeping this thing standing up is the really large, heavy concrete foundation and all the steel that's in it in conjunction with the material that we put back over that, that spread footing. That, that's, that's part of the calculation and part of the process of what keeps this thing standing up. The collector line is the the main transmission line. I mean, we all see the, the power lines that come from the electrical pole to our house, and uh, that's what powers our house, that was, that's what powers a lot of buildings. These are all powered, all the electrical wires to this are all underground, and that's what the collection system is. The collection system is the cables that run underground. Um, they run from tower to tower. Uh, typically, they'll be anywhere from 10, to, I've seen 12 or 13 towers in a, a circuit. And then those individual circuits all go to the substation. And from the substation, it gets put out onto the grid. We actually have two, uh, two erection crews. We break it up like this. We've got a base mid crew and we've got a top out crew. So we have two, I'd call them medium sized cranes. And then we have two very large cranes that are rolling around. So those guys will take the top off the nacelle while it's on the ground, obviously. They'll install the generator, do all the little checks and installations that they have to do there. Because what they do is they come in, they'll set the base section right over that converter. You know, it's sitting out of the ground all by itself. And they'll set the, the base section right down over top of it. And then they'll set the midsection. And then they'll build or erect the rotor while it's on the ground. And then those guys move out and go on to the next tower. Then the main erection crane comes in and they'll pick up the top section, set that. Once they get that top section done, they'll pick up the nacelle, they'll bolt that up top, and then they grab the rotor, they'll stab that on the end of the nacelle. Twenty semi-truck loads of crane parts will come in. It'll take them two days to assemble and get that crane ready for operation. That can be very uh, time consuming and costly in the grand scheme of things. So what they like to do where they can is crawl the crane. And what they'll do is they'll basically, they put the boom in a certain configuration and they just walk across the field with that crane to the next tower. And then once they're done and moved out, you have electricians that come in and they basically run all the wires. All the wires that run down tower to get the power from the generator up tower, they're all spooled up. There's a single ladder that runs all the way up the tower, multiple decks, usually anywhere from three, four, or five decks. These towers and the last project we did have a new system called a 3S lift. There's a single aluminum track that runs up there and there's a platform that runs on there. So on these, it's sort of like a, a mini lift system where you stand on it and it'll take you right up to the top in probably about three and a half or four minutes. It's quite an experience. When you go up the tower for the first time and you get on top of the nacelle, it's something that you don't forget. And on a clear day, you could probably see 10 miles or so. The blades are 62. Uh, meters long, which is about 205 feet. When they're spinning, uh, the rotors will spin at about anywhere from 14 to 17 RPM, which if you do the calculation, by the time you get to the end of the tip, you're probably pretty close to 200 miles an hour to produce uh, 2.5 megawatts of electricity. But one of these would power a major home improvement store or a grocery store.
Once the turbine stacked out, we finished the roads out with a, a new fresh layer, two inches of stone. We reseed everything along the edges of the road. We restore and, and rip everything back so that the farmer can come back and replant everything along the access roads. We put a 25 foot beauty ring around the base of the tower and everything gets restored and decompacted back to its natural state before we came here so that the farmer can come back and replant those areas. Seeing more go up, it, for me, it makes me think, okay, my part in this project is, is right around the corner. We're gonna get the commissioning teams here in the next week or two, and, and we're gonna start putting these things to grid. It's not gonna be very long before this park is putting energy out. I take a lot of pride in the finished product that we deliver for the landowners, for consumers, and for the state of Michigan. We have a great working relationship after we build these with the community, with the farmers in particular. I think it's a win-win. It's a win for us. It's a win for the farmers. It's a win for the community. It brings a lot of money into the tax base for the community, the schools. We got a lot of people that are on the uh, behind the scenes that are doing a lot of good things for us to keep the keep us out here rolling and doing a good job. You know, we've got. Uh, a few CMs out here that are running around the site all day keeping things together. We got engineers uh, on the back end that are helping us keep things moving forward. We got land managers out here that are uh, communicating directly with all of the farmers and, and, and addressing their concerns. It's just a great team. It's a good place to work and uh, I'm glad to be part of a project like this and support renewable energy. A big thanks to the community and their support that really has just allowed this to happen going forward for consumers as we are moving away from fossil fuel usage. Plans that we have as a company is going to be putting us out in the community where we're building our power sources, be it wind in this case, solar. It's really people in the state of Michigan that are wanting this and allowing this to happen where we are building our power plants now outside of our fence lines. For more information on our clean energy plan and on the Gratiot Farms Wind Project, visit mycleanenergy.com.